The European Union is teaming up with Southeast Asian nations to step up its commitment to tackle climate-related disasters. Both regions face increasing natural disasters such as earthquakes and floods. From the devastation of Typhoon Yagi in Asia to Storm Boris wreaking havoc in Europe, these crises highlight the urgent need for effective climate strategies. The partnership focuses on meeting immediate needs while building long-term resilience against future threats. And to provide more insight on how the EU is adapting its strategies in light of increasing frequency of climate-related disasters, we're joined by Yanis Lenacic, the EU Commissioner for Crisis Management. Now, Commissioner, prior to your visit to Indonesia, you wrote an article for an Indonesian publications where you mentioned that extreme weather events are becoming more frequent due to climate change. How is the EU adapting its disaster preparedness and response strategy to handle the growing number of climate-related disasters? Well, we are strengthening our own union civil protection mechanism in order to be able to face this increased impact of the climate breakdown. We see the answer to this new environment, to the new reality in strengthened cooperation, strengthened mutual uh, solidarity among EU member states, but also in other regions like Southeast Asia. That's why we have supported the uh, AHA Center for humanitarian aid and disaster management since its establishment. And today we have signed a, a new administrative arrangement that further strengthens this cooperation. So we need to strengthen cooperation at the regional level as well as between the regions because, let's face it, no one, no country alone can face this new reality on its own. So specifically, Commissioner, how is the EU working with ASEAN countries to strengthen their disaster preparedness in light of these growing climate risks, as you say? Well, with three tracks of action. First is exchange of knowledge and experience. This goes in both directions. We have experience in Europe uh, with floods, with forest fires, uh, and so on. But we see there is also, also a lot of experience in Southeast Asia, uh, in all these um, uh, fields. So we believe that we should exchange uh, uh, more of our knowledge and experience. Second, we will uh, exchange experts who will work with uh, each other so as to improve our uh, preparedness and response uh, capacities. And third, we will organize trainings for first responders uh, because uh, these are on the front line of our, of our response capacities. So there is a multiple track approach to this, to this issue and we believe that uh, only together we can face these new challenges that are greater than ever before. Indeed. Now, Typhoon Yagi and the floods in Europe, which you referenced in your article, highlighted the global nature of the climate crisis. What lessons has the EU taken from these recent events in both Southeast Asia and Europe, and how are these lessons shaping the EU's climate resilience efforts? We have, in the, in the face of this new reality, we have decided to pursue two uh, avenues of our st uh, stronger action. First of all, we need to invest more in prevention and preparedness. We cannot only focus on response, meaning we, can only, we cannot only act once disaster already happens, because with this new uh, uh, intensity and frequency of disasters, we would soon be overwhelmed if we only focus on response. We need to focus more on preparedness, on adaptation, and also on prevention where we can still prevent. Second, as I said, none of us, no individual country can face this uh, alone. Even countries that have uh, a lot of capacity, that have a lot of uh, response uh, capacity, find themselves increasingly in need of assistance from others. That's why we promote regional cooperation like the one in uh, Southeast Asia through the AHA Center, and also cooperation between the, region, the, between the regions. And here I think we have a very good basis uh, between the European Union and uh, ASEAN. Uh, this cooperation is already 47 years old, and we will continue that. And this signature of uh, administrative arrangement today is just another important milestone in our stronger cooperation. Now, you've stressed that the, these extreme weather events are fast becoming the new norm. How is EU planning to invest in long-term climate resilience, both within Europe and in partnership with regions like Southeast Asia? Well, uh, 
we need to reduce the risks that come with this um, increased uh, climate uh, impact, climate change impact. We need to identify, for instance, where the danger lies with regard to the uh, tropical uh, typhoons, tropical storms. We need to identify where, the, where are the areas where there is increased danger of uh, devastating floods and landslides. And we have to act accordingly. How do you act accordingly? Well, you can either encourage uh, people to move to safer locations or you protect, you, you, you introduce measures that protect uh, populated areas in those, area, in those uh, parts that are uh, most exposed to these new uh, dangers. So there are various uh, ways to deal with it. Uh, what is the most important lesson is that you cannot sit and wait until the disaster strikes because then it may already be too late. And second, it is a proven that uh, every euro or rupee invested in prevention and preparedness can save many euros or dollars uh, in response and uh, avoid the damage. Well, Commissioner Lenicic, thank you for sharing your insights with us today. We've been speaking with Yanis Lenicic, the EU Commissioner for Crisis Management. Thank you.